morning, everyone, and welcome to today's Cup of Joe. It's the 28th of May, and uh, Father Dave and I had some work to do, and uh, so I didn't have time to put on clerics. So I'm wearing this today on one of my favorite shirts with one of my favorite Bible passages, and we'll use it as our prayer today. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord, as you tell us in the book of Proverbs, chapter 27, verse 17, as iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. Lord, we ask that you would bring people into our lives to challenge us to grow in holiness, to hold us accountable to grow in holiness, and help us to be holy. Lord, we thank you for brothers and sisters who help us on that path, to help us to be holy as you are holy. Help us to strengthen each other, to guide each other, and to build each other closer to you. Lord, we ask all this, and we ask that you would give us strength as you give St. Paul strength in this Acts of the Apostles. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. And so uh, we got a lot to get through in the next couple of days because we're going through like eight chapters in three days. And uh, so we're going to try to keep up with it. We're going to go through a couple today and then get into the rest of them over the next uh, couple days. So... Um, we're coming down to the end of the Easter season, the end of the Acts of the Apostles, so let's, uh, let's get into that a little bit. I am um, beginning. One ascension, two Pentecost, three crippled man, four boldness, five escaping prison, six is deacon, seven is Stephen, eight is Philip, nine is Paul, Saul's conversion, ten is Cornelius, eleven is Gentiles, twelve is Herod, 13 is Paul and Barnabas, 14 is strength is strength and humility, 15 is Jerusalem, 16 is Paul and Silas, 17 is Athens, 18 is Corinth, 19 is Ephesus, 20 is suffering and sadness, and 21 is one we're going to skip over, but we'll have to talk about briefly, Paul's arrested, so arrested, and 22 clever, which is where we are today. So here we are. Chapter 21 is Paul gets arrested because he's in Jerusalem preaching the name of Jesus again. And he knew this was going to cause a problem. He knew this was going to be a challenge. So, sure enough, Paul gets himself arrested. The, and it's ugly. It's messy. And in chapter 22, I call it the chapter of cle his cleverness. So Paul's cleverness is incredibly clever in this chapter. And he does two things. One, he shares his testimony. He shares how it was that Jesus has transformed him. And two, he is very wily here. He knows that there's Pharisees and Sadducees. He used to be a Pharisee. And so he knows that they're at odds with one another. And he uses that against him to keep himself out of trouble. And that's exactly what he does. So he says, I am one who believes in the resurrection. And I believe in the resurrection of Jesus. And so the the Pharisees get all excited and say, well, he believes what we believe. He believes in the resurrection and he creates a debate against the Sadducees and Pharisees and it takes all the attention off of him and the attention is put on the battle between the Sadducees and Pharisees. So he starts to kind of cleverly get himself out of this. But before he does that, he also shares his conversion moment on the road to Damascus and how he was transformed and they know it. They know they were Pharisees. He used to live in Jerusalem. They know who he is. And they're, they're asking him, what happened to you? I think it's fascinating. And I think that's something important for all of us. Is what happened to you? Why are we different? Why do we Christians look different? Why do we, why do, what's different about our lives? And how has Jesus changed us? And I thought today, just in a brief moment, share my own brief testimony. Because when I grew up, I was just very much involved in the faith. My mom and dad were incredibly faithful. My siblings were faithful. Uh, we went to Mass on Sunday. We prayed and did things like that together. Uh, but it was all in my head and just waiting to be drawn out. And over my high school years, I little by little, I had some friends that were faithful and held me somewhat accountable, but I wasn't excited about it. I didn't care too much about it. And it was when I was in college when I was on my own and had to make the decision for myself, I, I said, well, I'm going to continue going to church for a while. And I did that simply because I have said before, I didn't want to have to lie to mom that I wasn't going. And I, I was scared of 
uh, not going to heaven. So I went, and little by little I saw people who taught me what, I guess, ironically, what this shirt says. Iron sharpens iron. I saw people who I held in high esteem living their faith in profound ways, and they challenged me to want to live my faith in profound ways. And so little by little I came to Bible study and got involved in Bible study, and it transformed my life. That group of guys, a group of guys trying to sharpen me to become the man I'm called to be, to not let me stay where I am, to not let me be comfortable with where I am. And that group of guys, which were pretty troublesome, turned into a pretty great group of guys, of which three priests came out of it and a number of missionaries and a great number of holy men who are great fathers and live in their lives in holy families now. And that is the crux of my story, which eventually leads to going to seminary and all of that. But I encountered Jesus. I want other people to encounter Jesus. And that's what Paul did. He says, I've encountered Jesus Christ and I can never be the same. And I hope that's true for you. I know it's true for me. That you've encountered Jesus Christ and you can never be the same. And that was why Paul went through all of this misery. Why he did everything that he did in the Acts of the Apostles that we've been going through. And we'll finish up in the next couple of days. He went through all of this because he encountered Jesus Christ and he could never be the same. And his cleverness led him into this situation. And all he cared about was making sure people knew Christ and Christ would it come into their lives as well, and he'd do whatever it took. That was his desire, and that's, I think, the same thing for myself. When we encounter Christ, we can't help but want other people to encounter that as well. So no matter where you are in your walk, keep opening your heart and your mind to encounter Jesus Christ so that we can all go forward together to help more people encounter Jesus Christ, because when we do, life is never the same. And we can never find joy until we find it through Christ. So that's my challenge for today. Going forward, to share a little bit of your own story. To think about your own story. Maybe share it with somebody. But I'm going to ask you today, throughout the day, to take a little bit of time to think about what are my major encounters with Christ in my life. If I have, can't come up with any, they're there. You need to dig deeper. And if you're struggling even then to think of it, well, I'm going to ask you to really start entering into deeper relationship with Christ because he's wanting to transform your life and he wants to transform my life. And the more we encounter him each and every day, the more we find joy. And that's what this show is all about, is allowing ourselves to encounter Jesus through joy. And when we encounter him, we can't help but find joy, even in struggles. And so I'll ask for, your ble- for God's blessing over you today. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. My prayer for you all is that today's cup of joy might be a means of helping you all find the joy that only Christ can give. Let's find means of encountering him today, for he's there. We just have to discover how he wants to speak to us today. God bless you.